Token Terrors is a one versus one semi-abstract battle game. Uh, it's grid based, so um, basically you're a warlord who controls an army of 10 miniature monsters in a fight to the death. Uh, you have X amount of commands that you're able to issue per turn, and then uh, through uh, there's a quantity called surge points that you generate through different actions that allow you to take extra commands per turn. So you just kind of find uh, asymmetrical um, mechanics that are specific to each faction and utilize your commands in a judicious way and figure out a way to kill all of your opponents before they kill yours. I'm a big Magic the Gathering player and I love playing uh, decks that have this one mechanic where you generate a ton of token creatures. And what they are, are these, uh, these one power, one defense chump blocker creatures that just sort of absorb damage and then you just toss them away. Um, but a lot of decks make a ton of them. Um, and I just thought it'd be a lot neater if you were able to enhance your favorite token generation deck instead of using a card which takes up a ton of room or a boring dice or whatever else, a glass bead. Um, you'd have a cool little dice-sized miniature that you could like toss in your dice bag and when you're playing a game, you can just take one out and put it onto the battlefield and they just have a little bit more style and uh, flavor. Um, so we did that, we accomplished that part of the project and then we were like, oh man, board games are really blowing up right now. Like, we should try and think of a board game to help sell this product even more and give it more value. Like, the soldiers, for example, are really good in groups of three. Uh, they have a lot of group control. So, soldiers, you know, when you activate one, you can have another two follow them. And then they also have an ability called Phalanx, where they become stronger when they attack based on how many you're surrounding, how many surrounding soldiers you have. Uh, the Wyverns are really good, like lone hunters. They have a lot of distance, but not any group control um, and long range attacks. Zombies are just, their abilities make them hard to kill and also that they can return later in the game. The goblins are like these really um, like reckless damage bombs. Like you'll almost certainly lose it the turn that you really put it to work, but it can kill lots of guys in one turn. Um, the elves are also like slightly less effective zone control creatures, but they have great range because they can fire diagonally. Um, and then the flying machines are just really good for getting a bunch of them out fast and just moving this brick of range, uh, range creatures around the board and sort of trying to control it with mass instead of uh, like a lot of movement. Um, the name of our publishing company is Terrible Games. Uh, actually, my one partner, Phil, is right over there, uh, dressed as Wal Waluigi. Uh, um, and then um, there's our graphic designer slash marketing uh, person, uh, Shannon Light Hadley. Uh, my friend Lucas Gerace is a playtester and also helps out with lore and some storytelling stuff. Um, Tim Brocious is our media director and our 3D sculptor. Um, and I think that's everybody. And, and then myself. I do, um, I, I do all the day-to-day -day stuff, kind of, uh, co-creator of Token Tears, but I do all of our illustration work. We've iterated it a ton. Uh, we've, we've brought it to a bunch of events like this one and just playtested, playtested, playtested. And uh, yeah, we're finally, we think we're finally ready to just like close the door on any more rules that it's like very, very close to final with a couple little tweaks to just make sure that the rules are nice and tight and perfect so that you can play the game uh, when you open the box. The response has been great. Uh, we've had the table mostly packed for a good chunk of the day. Uh, people have also been trying out our in development game, which is very, very rough, but still it's got a lot of table presence and it visually grabs people, so we bring it with us. It's called Destroy the Castle. Like as we've been developing it and kind of taking our time working on it mechanically, we also realize that there's basically an infinite amount of like other factions that we could uh, unleash into the into the world that this game takes place in. Late February, early to mid March release of 2020, uh, we're tentatively just telling people the springtime right now. You know, we already have our season two offering like ready. Like those are done. Um, we're actually gonna have prototypes probably in the next couple months. We were thinking like it would be cool to do, initially it was supposed to be a Kickstarter exclusive. Then we realized there's some problems with that as far as like, you know, loyalty to backers. So we want all of our players to be able to access everything. But we just thought it'd be really neat if uh, every season that we release six, six uh, factions, um, we'll choose one of them and we'll, we'll recast them in a second color and give them a different power set. So we can write some more lore for them. We don't have to spend the upfront cost of getting another mold made for a new faction and we have some exclusive content that's specific to each season. And for season one, we decided to recast the Red Goblins in a puke green color, and they're called the Swamplins. Um, and uh, even though they're not listed in the rule booklet for the main six factions, people have been gravitating towards them. I don't really know why, maybe it's their cool color.